Hey everybody, this is Troy. This is just a little footnote to the video before it starts. I made an error while speaking at the beginning of this video and I wanted to go ahead and fix it right now. This open source operating system actually uses a dual kernel approach. It uses not only the Linux kernel, but also the Zircon kernel. Basically what that does is if you've got newer hardware, it will enact the Zircon kernel so the operating system will work well with newer hardware. But if you have something that is Linux compatible and older, it will use the Linux kernel. So they have a dual kernel approach. It'll pick whichever kernel needs to be used for the OS, which I think is pretty impressive. I hope you all enjoy the video. I'm sure everybody out there has heard of Fuchsia OS. It's the operating system that Google's putting together to basically branch between the Chromebooks and the Android phones. They want to use it on both. But did you know that it is based on the Zircon kernel? Zircon is the core platform that powers the Fuchsia OS. Zircon is composed of a kernel as well as a small set of user space services, drivers, and libraries necessary for the system to boot, talk to hardware, load user space processes, and run them. But did you know there's an open source version of Fuchsia that runs on the Linux kernel? That's what we're talking about today on eBuzz Central. This video is made possible by the eBuzz Central store. If you hadn't had a chance yet, zip on over and check it out. It's got a lot of Linux themed apparel and goods. Everything from Arch Linux all the way to Linux Mint. So if you would, run on over and check it out. If there's something you would like to see on the store that isn't already there, please drop it in the comments below and we'll get right on it. Now, we're going to zip on over to a website, and we are presently at Dahlia OS's website. Now, what this is is basically the Fuchsia operating system with the Linux kernel underneath. And it gives you some base information here. Dahlia OS keeps things light by only including apps that you need, and you can add all your favorites from other operating systems using a container app. Now, this is in alpha stage, so there's a lot of things that don't work, but it is a pretty decent-looking little OS. It's got a wide range of supported devices, and it's going to provide a fast and stable experience on nearly every computer from a 2004 desktop tower to the latest generation of mobile notebooks. And it says, still not convinced? Now, guys, you can go right here, click try it out, and it lets you test drive it on the web. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that real quick. And as you can see, it boots right up, but there's some things down here that are blacked out. File manager, your terminal your web app store right here. So I'm gonna back out of this and go back to the website because I've downloaded it and we're gonna take a look at it in a virtual machine. And we're back over at the website and then down here is where you can download it. This is the most recent release, which is February 22nd, 2022. And that's what we're gonna be taking a look at today. And they do have older versions over here. If you wanna check those out, you can, but I will tell you they're less feature rich than the one we're getting ready to take a look at, but that's up to you. And then up top, it's got features, download it, demo, which we just looked at, developers. You got a list of developers right here on GitHub. Then you've got your documentation right here. You can open that up. And then it gives you the Dahlia documentation. It covers the overview, EFI, BIOS, KeyMu, VirtualBox, everything you need if you want to run this in a VirtualBox. And then Linux-based, Zircon-based. It goes over the differences there. The F image right here. And then Pangolin, which is the desktop environment. And then build root developers contribute, things like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to zip on over to the desktop. And if you download Dolly OS, throw it on a USB or open it up into a virtual machine, this is the screen you're met with. It does have that feel of a Chromebook. But at the same time, a lot of the newer desktop environments that seem to be coming out for Linux have this same kind of feel. You've got the dock in the middle, and then you've got an app menu over here, and then a search, and then, of course, your system tray over here. First thing I want to do is let's see what happens when you just right-click on the desktop. So we'll right-click. You've got settings and change wallpaper. So let's go take a look at the wallpapers. Those load up pretty good, and you've got just a couple to choose from here. Those change real quick. Okay, so I can't move that out of the way. Okay, that's a wallpaper repository. That's coming soon. So once that's open, you pretty much pick your wallpaper and close, save it. So let's right-click again. That's a good-looking wallpaper. And let's go with something like that, save. So I can see where that's going to be. That's really quick, guys, really responsive in a virtual box. So I'm going to go ahead and 
what happens if we switch it to black? Is that too dark? No, I think I'll leave it on the red. Let's go ahead and switch that back to red, and then you've got wallpapers, and then recent wallpapers. I guess that'll load up all your recent ones. Or you can go back to default over here, use a Bing wallpaper. Let's click on that. Oh, and it automatically pulls a wallpaper from Bing without the Bing branding. That's interesting. So let's go ahead and go back over. And I'm going to go ahead and go with what's out of the box and save that. Let's right-click again. Let's go to Settings. All right. Let's go ahead and maximize that. Kind of a familiar layout, but I do think it looks a little bit more professional. I don't know. Let me know. What do you think in the comments below? Right here, you've got network and internet, so you got the Wi-Fi is disabled, which we're running in the Ethernet, so that's good. Wi-Fi preferences, let's click on that. And that, I guess, that'll have different Wi-Fis. I don't know. Save networks, we got eight that are saved. Let's scroll down. It just doesn't show. What happens? I guess i got to click on that. You know, it's an alpha. Maybe you know that's working. Wi-Fi data usage, virtual private network. You can set that up, and then DNS options here. Connected devices. Okay, this is where your Bluetooth is. Files received via Bluetooth. You can verify right here. Not implemented yet, so that's not part of the alpha. Phone integration. Okay, I guess you'll be able to integrate that in here. And then customization. Personalize your experience. So we're presently in a dark mode. You can switch it to a light. That's bright. That looks really good, though. And then you've got highlighted colors you can use. Green, blue. Okay, is that too bright, guys? If I go dark with the... That's a little bit too much red, isn't it? Let's go ahead and just leave it on light. Let's see right there. And then you've got the center. It's centered. Or you can send it to the left hand. Okay, so you could have this over to the left if you wanted to. Window border radius. Now, what is... Is that just makes the radius smaller? I don't think it's doing anything. Colored title bars. We could click that on. And then those get dark. Okay. Okay. So if you wanted to make those dark, you could. So let's go ahead and turn them back off. I think it looks better that way, but that's really up to y'all. Display resolution. Resolution, screen timeout, and scaling. Now, I did notice when I tried to start this in a different mode in virtual machine, it wouldn't give me the right resolution. So when I made that change in the virtual machine, it actually started giving me the correct resolution, but there's no settings in here to change or adjust on yet. And then sound, locales, notifications, applications, installed apps and default apps, developer options, you can turn that on if you want to, and then about device, it lets you know we're running the Linux 5.17.0 release candidate 5 kernel, architecture unknown, desktop, we're running Pangolin 220222, looks like February 2nd, 2022, I'd guess, I'm not really sure, Dali is up to date, Last check, 222-2022. And then license, show third-party licenses. So that's pretty much your settings app, guys. And it is a little bit sluggish, but it is an alpha release. And I'm running it in a virtual box. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Let's go over here and check out the file manager. And you open that up, and it's just a base file manager. You've got root and system hive here. Settings, settings lock. I'm sure once they get along, let's see, can we add a folder? We can create a folder. Let's go ahead and create it. What do we want to call it? Ebus Central. Let's go ahead and create that folder. And there it is right there. Okay, let's go back. And there's our folder. What do we have over here? Other options. That's not doing anything. And then a hamburger menu. That's not doing anything yet. So, let's go ahead and close out of files. We've already looked at settings. Let's go ahead and open up the terminal. There's the terminal right there. Wonder if they have HTOP. HTOP. Let's open that up. And they do have HTOP. Let's maximize it. And what happened there? Let's minimize it. Okay, let's close that again. That must be a glitch. Let's run HTOP. I wanted to maximize it so you could all see it. Okay, right now I've got two CPUs issued to this machine. Right now, we're using about 30% of the CPU, and then on memory, I have 4 gigabytes issued to it, and we're using about 780 megabytes at rest. So, there's a little bit running in the background. I really want to get in-depth and try to see if there's any tracking software, because they are putting a Linux kernel inside of something that is being created by Google. I just want to make sure that there's no telemetry going on in the background. 
but most everything that I have seen, let's try maximizing that again. No, it still kind of gets funky on us. Let's go ahead and minimize it down. That may be something that we have to come back and take a look at. Let's go ahead and try H top or top. Let's try top. Nope. We got to close it completely out and then reopen it. So let's try top. It does have top. And it's saying the load is the same on memory and on CPU. And let's see if we can maximize top. And looks like user bus, S bin, open box, auto start. Doesn't look like we have anything that says Google on it running in the background. So that's a plus. All right. So let's go ahead and close out of the terminal. And then it shows we got a calculator. And you just got, it's the normal looking Google themed calculator. 25 times 6. Let's hit equals. Okay. Calculator works. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And what is this called? This is the Web App Manager. So you can install Discord, Visual Studio, Google Search. I don't want that. Townscaper, Dahlia OS Documentation, and then, of course, Minecraft Classic. So this is where they're going to have, like, web apps. I guess it will run in some kind of wrapper. I could be wrong. I'm going to do some more reading on it because I want to make sure that I give you guys accurate information. But... I just saw a tweet about this, and I wanted to get a video out on it as soon as possible. So let's go ahead and close the web app manager. And then this is photos, I take it. And it looks like they just have a bunch of the Dahlia icons in here. You can select or unselect. And then you can check videos and then albums. Now the question is, is this going to sync to Google Photos? Or are we going to be able to have it separate? That's another question I need to find out and ask. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of the Photos app. I'm going to right click on the panel. Okay, nothing happens there. Let's go over here and check the system tray. All right. Yes, this looks a lot like Chrome OS. You're in under root. Now, if you do install it, of course, your username would be there. And then settings we've already looked at. What is that? Let's edit, close, and then of course power. You've got network connected, Bluetooth on. Can we shut the Bluetooth off? Yes. Airplane mode is off. Language English theme. Oh, so you can change the theme by a click right there, dark or light. I really like that. Then you have Do Not Disturb, Shortcuts, New Event, Alpha Build, Dolly OS website. And then, of course, we have Volume. Then we've got Brightness. And it doesn't seem that it adjusts the brightness at all on my virtual machine. I've already got it as bright as possible. And then, of course, Date and Time. Will that open a calendar app? It does not as of yet. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And then we have a search. Search device, apps, and the web. Now, does this have Google on it? Let's do a search right here real quick. Let's look for eBuzz Central. Central. And how do we want to look at it? Web App Manager or Web... Okay, let's look at the web browser. Okay, web browser, web app. You are running Dalio OS's root. Web runtime sandboxing is disabled. Okay, so DuckDuckGo is your default search engine. I like that. What do we got over here? Themes. So this does look like it might have a Chromium base, but I'm going to double check. Who are we? Okay, that's just for DuckDuckGo. App and extension. All right. How do we go back? Let's close. Let's open the web app back up. Let's go ahead and close that. Sorry, guys. I'm just kind of working my way around it. I'm not used to it, okay? Okay, so the web, it opens up. And let's go ahead and do a search for eBuzz Central. eBuzz Central, YouTube, creating Linux, okay. And... I really want to get more info about the web browser, but it doesn't seem to be Google Chrome, so I'm not going to complain, okay? If I pick something over here, well, let's just open that up on Utreon. There's my Utreon page, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. I kind of like the browser. It's pretty quick. It's pretty snappy, and it's not Chrome. And then we come back over here. You've got different categories up here. You can go Internet, Media, Gaming, Development, Office, and System. Or you can go All Applications. 
You've got your web app manager, settings, calculator, terminal, text editor. Let's go ahead and open up the text editor. Okay, that looks just like, honestly, that looks like notes from Google, but I could be wrong, but I'll double check on that. Let's go back over in there. Graft. Okay, that's pretty interesting. This comes with Graft out of the box. And those of you not familiar with Graft, I believe this is a virtual machine environment and a kernel tester. I'd have to read up on it some more. I'd have to. But like here, Linux, Dahlia OS, Kimu, KVM, Dahlia OS build, kernel. Let's go look, look it up real quick, okay? Let's go to the web browser. Go ahead and maximize that. And we're going to look for Dahlia OS graft tool to manage virtual machines let's open it up on github my center scroll on my mouse is going pretty slow fedora workstation it shows it kernel guys i will get back with you but i do believe this is a tool that you use to do tests on the kernel i could be wrong this may be something that you can run a complete virtual machine in but I really don't want to misspeak because I know a lot about like Kimu and boxes, but I'm not really up to date on Graft. But I will definitely do that and get back with you all. But that is really nice that it comes with it out of the box. So let's go ahead and close that. And you got that. Restart, start, destroy. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. Let's go back over here. You've got your files. We've already looked at media, your clock, web browser, task manager. Let's go ahead and open that up. Processes, resources, doesn't seem to be working at present. But like I said, this is an alpha build. So there are some things that are just not working as of yet. But it does have rounded corners. It's very clean. It's very snappy. And if it doesn't have the Google telemetry baked into it, I think it's going to be really nice. And if it can run Linux apps, that's an important thing. And then system logs and then welcome. Let's open up the welcome. Will that open? Build information, feedback, social media, credits. You are on a pre-release build of Dahlia OS. Some features may not work as intended, which we knew. Let's go ahead and maximize that. Build information, feedback, social media, credits, software. View information about third-party software. We already saw the build information. It's a pre-release pangolin. Let's go back. Let's see. View information about third-party software. Hive. Yeah, a lot of this isn't working. Okay, that's Apache. Okay, all of that is Apache too. And then getting started with Dali OS. Well, guys, that was a quick look at Dali OS. Like I said, they've got a ways to go, but it is a clean-looking OS. It does have that Chrome OS feel about it, but as of right now, I can't find any Google telemetry inside of it. So let me know what you think. Is this something you might download, throw on a USB, put in a virtual machine, and take for a test drive? Let me know in the comments below. And if you get a chance, zip on over to the Ebo Central store. Check it out. Take a look around. If there's something you like, go ahead and pick it up. If there's something you would like to see on the store, go ahead and drop that down in the comments for me. Please do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything. And if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we are producing, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a member to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. Thank you for watching the video, and I will see you in the next video.